What's up guys, Keegan here with Jordan Distributors. Today we are going to be showing you step by step how to install our plug and play push to start conversion kit. I will have a list down below in the video description of the vehicles that this install guide applies to as well as other information that you will need to reference during install. Without any further ado, let's get started. For this install, we are going to start by disconnecting the battery. Next, we have two panels inside the car that we need to remove to gain access to the wiring under the dash. First is this panel under the steering column in the driver's knee area, and next is the clamshell that covers the steering column. Once we have these panels out of the way, we can begin the removal of the factory ignition switch and key cylinder housing. The key cylinder housing is held in place with two screws located on the top, like shown here. Please also note that some vehicles have these screws located on the bottom. The process to remove them will be the same either way. These are tamper-proof screws that have no screw head to be able to turn them, and they are also recessed. We have found it easiest to use a rotary tool to cut a small slit into the screw, and then use a flat screwdriver to unscrew them. The reason we are doing this is because in this vehicle, we will be installing the start button in the factory keyhole for a nice OEM look. If you would rather mount your start button somewhere else, then you can skip this step. With all of these components removed, we can begin the install of our kit. First, we are going to install the plug and play push to start main harness. This harness has the same connector as the factory ignition switch, so we just need to plug it in to the same place that we unplugged the factory switch. Now, we need to connect the black wire on this harness to ground. We recommend putting it under this nut located here at the brake pedal assembly. You can use any good ground location that you would like, we have just found this to be the easiest. Next, we need to connect the orange wire to the brake switch. You will need to locate the brake switch connector in your vehicle. On the screen now is a photo of the brake switch connector found in most Nissan vehicles. We will have a chart in the video description for you to confirm the color of the wire that you will need to connect to in your exact vehicle. This is a brake pedal assembly that we have removed from a vehicle so that it is easier to see. The brake switch is located here at the top. It is easiest to start at the brake pedal itself and follow it upward until you locate the brake switch. We are going to take this quick connector supplied with the kit and with a pair of needle nose pliers, clip it around this wire. All you need to do is line it up by hand and then give it a gentle squeeze with the pliers until it clicks into place. You can now plug the orange wire from the push to start kit into this connector. Now to install the antenna. The antenna wiring is quite long, which will allow you to mount it nearly anywhere that you would like. We chose to mount it here on the back side of this lower dash panel for easy access. However, if you would like to mount it somewhere else for added security, you most certainly can do so. Last but not least, we need to install the start button itself. This wire is also quite long, so if you would like to mount the start button somewhere other than the factory keyhole, you will have plenty of wire to be able to do so. Included with your kit is this button adapter to adapt the start button to the factory keyhole and requires no cutting or drilling to install it. It is worth noting that if you remove the factory key cylinder to mount your start button in the factory keyhole, then you will lose the function of the steering wheel lock. It does look nice to mount your start button in the factory keyhole, but if you would like to mount it somewhere else so that you can keep the steering wheel lock, you most certainly can do so. For an example, we are going to show mounting the start button to this lower dash panel. You will need to take into consideration the clips that hold this panel in and make sure that you drill your hole low enough to avoid interfering with these. Simply mark the hole with a punch and then with a hole saw, drill the hole for your button. We have these properly sized hole saws available on our website if you would like to purchase one. Any household drill will work just fine. Then attach your start button and reinstall the panel. The process for starting the vehicle will be as follows. Simply insert the key into the ignition and turn it one click to unlock the steering column. Then put your foot on the brake and press the button once to start. If you choose to install your button this way, make sure that you do not under any circumstances remove the key from the ignition while driving. The steering column will relock. Now, the only thing we have left to do is plug everything in to the push to start module, fasten this box as well as all of the wiring neatly under the dash, and reinstall the clamshell and lower dash panel. The install is now complete. Go ahead and reconnect the vehicle battery. Now, all you need to do is swipe one of the keys over the antenna, put your foot on the brake, press the button, and the car will start right up. 